let's look ahead a little bit to 2024 stuff. What could be awaiting the Knicks over the next 12 months, including next off season, as far as a potential big splash? Well, all right, so let's assume they maintain all these assets that they have. They have all these draft picks. Um, I think that then you have to make a move. Uh, we talked about this timeline and this window, um, and you, these draft picks aren't going to, you know, they, they're they just sitting there. So you have to use them at some point. And if you're a win, in a win-now situation and you've been waiting um, for that star player that you that you want to become available, I think you have to pull the trigger it next next summer if you don't do it this summer um or this or during next season and i you know we've all heard about the possibility and the dream of joel Embiid and Giannis Antetokounmpo and i think those are the two guys you put at the very very top and if either of those co- guys become available the Knicks will uh give up all their assets to get them yeah so Jonathan Steph just mentioned Joel Embiid Giannis Antetokounmpo mm-hmm. who which one or two players is on the top of your mind when it comes to potentially bringing in a superstar over the next 365 days? I mean, Giannis would be lovely. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not holding my breath for him. Uh, I mean, it's Embiid. You know, we don't have to beat around the bush here. He's, he's the guy, everybody, I mean, the CA connections, again, we could joke about it, but like they're there. Um, you swap him out for Mitch. You don't lose anything on defense like you would be with Towns. It's a, it's a, I mean, I think it's a hand in glove fit between, you know, him and, and Brunson running pick and rolls. I think that's I mean, that's that's your path. I think the biggest questions for me will be, number one, let's say Philadelphia, you know, Daryl Morey pulls a rabbit out of his hat and Philly has a fantastic year, the best the best year of the, the process, so to speak. And, and Joel Embiid is a happy camper. Do they then go to Carl Anthony Towns, you know, uh, at a perhaps a lower price point, because as Ian spoke about before, I mean, you got to pay the piper in Minnesota at some point. I I don't think they're going to be a second apron team if they're not a contender. So is that the thing? Or as Steph brought up before, you know, Donovan Mitchell, who they almost traded for last summer, uh, uh, you know, in a year, he's going to just have one more year left on that deal. Would they go with, a small backcourt, you know, um, and see if that could work out and try to figure out the defense. I think that the easiest thing again would be if Embiid ass out and then they just, they, and here's the best part, depending on your viewpoint, they don't have to quibble about, Oh, do we go all in for Embiid? Do we go half? No, you're giving up whatever it takes to get Joel Embiid. And then you're, you're, you're walking away. And I, and I want to throw one more name out there because I, I don't, nobody knows what's going to happen in Phoenix. Um, that wow. thing could go crazy in haywire. But Devin Booker, CAA guy. I know we don't we don't talk what connection that is. I don't know. Uh, and also Kentucky. So uh, he's another guy that you know I, if he ever becomes available, that the Knicks would jump all over. Yeah, I agree with all that. I think that the most important on court results here for the Knicks outside of the Garden are happening at the. Uh, at the Wells Fargo Center this year with Philadelphia because of <laughs> what you guys have all talked about, right? Because what's Darren Moore going to do with James Harden? Does he keep him? He's under contract. Does he keep him going into the season and, and roll the dice? Do they get a, a platter back that maybe is not as good as Harden himself? I don't think they're in a, in, a, in a choice where they can settle for anything less that makes them a championship contender if you're trading James Harden. So that's a high bar. And, you know, look, let's see what happens in Philly. But the, the connections for Embiid are there. I think that, you know, even uh, maybe behind the scenes a little bit over the course of the last few years in Philly, he's been upset with some of the decisions that have been made, which seems obvious from the outside because of how things have gone. But I think they're at an inflection point here, right? Ben Simmons is gone. They went all in for James Harden. Daryl Morey wanted James Harden. He got him. And it hasn't worked to date. So I could see easily how Embiid would kind of throw his hands up in the air if the Sixers struggle again next season. 